And welcome back. Tonight we are discussing the perils of domestic violence and how one local organization, in particular in Pleasantville, is committed to ending the abuse as well as empowering the survivors. I'm very pleased to be joined right now by Carla Horton, who is executive director of Hope Store. And also we're joined by New York State Senator Ruth Assel Thompson, who is dedicated to changing the laws in the books in Albany on this very issue. Ladies, thank you very much for the time. We just heard two very powerful stories from two women in different stages of life, but with a common problem. Um, talk a little bit um, about, we gave some of the numbers, and I'll be honest, even from my end, I was surprised by the scope of just how many women over the course of a lifetime or at any one time are victims of any form of abuse. Um, talk about what you see coming through the doors of your organization and, and how it might surprise the audience, because as they said, it doesn't matter what your social, economic background, doesn't matter your color, your religion, whatever else, uh, victims take all shapes and sizes. Well, I'll just tell you, one Tuesday morning we run a, we always on Tuesday mornings run a Spanish language support group, and some of those women would be happy to make $10 an hour uh, without benefits. That one morning there was a woman looking at our boutique, which is donated food and household items and toiletries, looking for baby formula. At the end of the day, I worked with a woman whose adjusted gross family income was over $8 million. And during the course of that day or the course of any normal week, we see it all. It, it really, there's no way to inoculate yourself against domestic violence. You could be rich or poor, black, white, Hispanic. You could have a great education. You could, well, as you saw with yep. Pat Carrera, and as you saw with Danielle, that this is something that could just affect anyone. And what's so hard about it, of course, is that's a very confounding thing for people. They would like to think, oh, that won't happen in my community, that won't happen to my daughter. And what we do at Hope Store is not only work with victims to help them on their road to survivor, but we do a lot of work in the schools uh, on uh, prevention. You know, curious, Carla, when people come to your organization, have they already got past the denial? Do they already know at this point that they have a problem, they just don't know how to get out of it? Or do you have to convince them in many cases that you've just been brainwashed that this is this normal is acceptable? All of the above. Yeah. And a lot of people will come to us and they go, my friend told me to come, my pastor told me to come, uh, my sister told me to come. I, I don't really feel like I'm a victim of domestic violence. I'm not really sure why I'm here because he's never hit me. And yet they're afraid to take two steps to the left or right without his permission. Uh, it's petrifying as a father with daughters when you see two very well-adjusted women that were just here telling us their stories and whatever narrative you have in your head as to who the victims are, um, I think people should maybe readjust their realities that it's everybody, as you said, uh, up and down the spectrum. And Senator, I'm curious, has the law caught up with this problem in that my God, the numbers are staggering. Um, and obviously, you're right there on the front lines in Albany on this. Does the law recognize where we are and does it help out these victims or is it kind of not there yet? Richard, the answer is a little bit of both. It's catching up, I guess that's a better way to put it. In 2009, um, I don't want to talk politics here today, but it, you know, the I was in the majority, and therefore I not only chaired the uh, Task Force on Domestic Violence, mm -hmm. but I also chaired um, the Crime, Crime Victims and Corrections Committee and was the ranker on judiciary, all of which um, is the whole gamut yeah. of from, from, the, from law enforcement all the way to the courts and prison. So we, we began to look at legislation that had lined dormant. There were legislators who had been putting in um, or attempting to put in legislation to combat this. In 2009, we were able to pass the largest single number of legislative initiatives than we ever did before. So. I assume it's really easy to get an order of protection. Apparently that's not the case, and apparently the order of protection depends on the jurisdiction. And, yes, it uh, does. you know, and for me it was an eye-opener. I said, wait a minute, you mean if somebody comes forward and says they got a problem, and they said, it's not, it's just not that easy. And then you add kids into the equation and then the shared custody rights and then all the other things. Um, it's much more complicated, I think, than the outside person imagines. And it that's, is. 
And, and that's why Hope Store is so important right. because imagine how hard this is right. when we sit here in the comfort of our own lives and our own safety right. and struggle to achieve success working with one survivor at a time. Now this is somebody who's scared to death. Actually, let me just give you a statistic. At least half of the victims of domestic violence are persons that are outside of the statutory definition of family. One half. So when we looked at the legislation, people who were of a family traditionally as we know families, they were covered. People who were outside of that were not. So the bill that we're working on right now, for instance, authorizes that family courts have a non-family offense temporary order or orders of protection that protect th these victims as well. We've got on the screen now um, the hotline number. Give an idea to the audience at home, um, and I'm sure I always think of the people watching as they see this and how many of their personal stories they're saying, well, that sounds like me. If they call the number or they're someone they know going through this, they get them the number, what do they get on the other side of the line? They get a skilled, compassionate, caring advocate who will listen to what they have to say, believe what they're saying, and help them explore their rights and their options. Well, thankfully, um, we're not anymore in a time where it's acceptable to raise your hand uh, uh, to your spouse or to your partner in any way. Yes, um, exactly. And sounds like none of the law is catching up to this here, but there's still so much communication. I want to mention there's an event coming up on the 25th of this month. Uh, uh, yes. And uh, I, I know we were working with you folks on this. Uh, talk to people because obviously your organization uh, is relying on funding. Um, it's a nonprofit, so uh, give an idea to the people on the 25th um, if they like to attend. Well, if you'd like to attend Hope Store's uh, annual gala at Tappan Hill Mansion, please do contact us at our main office. That's 914-747-0828. Uh, the theme this year is Hope Off for Hope offers possibilities every day. Uh, the information you see on your screen, we've also, uh, if you go to the site, uh, obviously you'll find out all that information. Senator Carla, I want to thank you both oh, here. Um, and I, I know for many people, myself included, well, obviously we know domestic violence is an issue, but I, you know, I, I think I'm pretty well read on this. I had no idea the prevalence of it. Um, and uh, if we treat it as a crisis, which it sounds like it is, um, then maybe not just legislatively, but also uh, from a societal level, we'll do things a little bit different here. Thank you both. I really appreciate the oh, time. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. All right, you. everyone. Up next, um, it certainly has been a violent week for schools across the country, from the shooting that we saw in Ohio to the stabbings in Pennsylvania. There's always, though, in this tragedy, seemingly a hero who steps forward. We're going to introduce you to one such person at a school resource officer who did just that. We'll have that story when we return. Thank you.